Happy Easter, Savior Nation. Although it's certainly a different kind of Easter than we're used to celebrating, you and me. More of a homemade Easter this year, I suppose. Like this. I've heard tell lately of families making an occasion of live stream Sunday Masses, getting dressed up beforehand, making brunch together afterwards. So maybe today, those families will get especially dressed up and cook themselves an extra special Easter Sunday brunch, all in honor of the day. The day. Like I said, a homemade Easter. Parents will doubtless do what they can to make sure the kids enjoy as normal an Easter as possible, just as doubtless that crafty Easter bunny found the way from house to house again this year, including maybe yours. Grandparents may just have to FaceTime the Easter egg hunt this year, I'm afraid, but that accommodation seems like a good idea, as well as a kind of unnecessary reminder. Because for us grown-ups, Easter means we've come closer to the peak of the crisis that's still marching towards us. Perhaps, depending upon where you are, you're in the middle of it already. It must feel less like Easter in some ways than a long, drawn-out Holy Week, where every day we wake up, it's Good Friday, over and over again. Like that Bill Murray movie, only gone so unspeakably sad. Yet in all of this, we are called to celebrate Easter, you and I, that it is true that the Lord is risen, that he has appeared to Simon and more. Just where might that Easter be in this unsettled and unsettling time, beyond the baskets and the brunch and the special springtime clothes? Well, there's one fairly obvious place to look, isn't there? You know. I learned a long time ago that there was a difference between Lent and Lent. The first is the Lent we choose. The other is the one that chooses us. And they are not the same Lent at all. The first Lent, the church Lent, comes like clockwork every Ash Wednesday, lasts for 40 days exactly, and then yields in turn to Easter, taking with it when it goes the penances we chose. But then the, there's the other Lent not the church Lent, our Lent. That Lent shows up unannounced whenever it feels like it. For us, it doesn't let us choose our penance, it chooses our penance for us. And after 40 days, it may only just be getting started. And doesn't that Lent feel like this one? But you know, if it's true that there's Lent and there's Lent, Shouldn't there also be an Easter and an Easter? Not the Easter of bunnies and baskets and brunches, but a real Easter, the one that ends a real Lent, the one we'd gladly trade every single one of those jelly beans and candy eggs for. Where might that Easter be, I wonder? Somewhere ahead, up the road, when the virus breaks and the suffering stops, when Eureka, someone at last discovers a cure and we heave deep sighs of relief together, there will be that Easter, I have no doubt. But the Easter that will surely come someday doesn't help us much with the Easter we're called to celebrate today. In fact, it just may actually get in the way of the Easter we're called to mark today, cause us to miss it. Not unlike poor Thomas did, the apostle who missed the first one. But where might that Easter be? Today's Easter, our Easter, an Easter we all very much need. Let me come at it this way. The last couple of weekends for a little change of scene, I've driven around neighborhoods in Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. Sometimes even getting a little bit lost, which after all these years living here, it's nice to know I can still do. The weather's been what the weather's been, but you know, it's been nice enough often enough, and sometimes it's been even better. Those drives have been breathtakingly beautiful. The flowering trees especially have been in rare form. First the Bradford pears, and then the magnolias, and the cherries, and now here they come, the red buds, and the crab apples, the dogwoods. Looking better than I remember them in years, it's as if all the flowering trees have noticed we need a little bit of extra cheering up this spring, you and I. And you know, they're on it. But the trees were just the backdrop because everywhere I drove, what I really saw was people. Everywhere, people, overwhelmingly people. 
over and over and over again, people, people, and more people. Taking a break from the cabin fever of homeschooling and day caring, of yard working and spring cleaning and home improving, of working from home and sheltering in place. I saw walkers and I saw joggers and I saw runners, some by themselves, others in small and spread out packs. Sometimes, often actually, in chatty pairs at slower paces, the better to gesture as they walked and talked. Husbands and wives together, sometimes holding hands, or a pair of women, or a pair of men. And who can say how deep the pools of friendship were for the conversations I saw to sail upon? Moms out jogging with their kids, or dads, or moms and dads together, the better to herd the kids. Or maybe those moms, those dads, those moms and dads pushed a baby carriage or two, a carriage built for one or built for two or once or twice, even built for three. Cyclists too, I saw a lot of cyclists, riding in solitaire, riding in groups, riding le leisurely or with great focus and purpose aerodynamically optimized, families with all their bikes and all their different sizes, training wheels usually included, or determined men in those matching spandex off outfits, you know, the ones which once seen cannot be unseen. People lined up for takeout coffee, spaced a respectable six feet apart or so, but once or twice, it wasn't a coffee shop where people lined up, it was a pub where people seemed to apply at 10 a.m. the airport principle that, you know, it's got to be five o'clock somewhere, that if they weren't maintaining that respectable six foot distance, well, perhaps they'd wash their hands at least. Older people too, by and large, the more vulnerable, not in the crowds themselves, but watching the crowds instead from their porches or walking very carefully on the other side of the streets. And the dogs, my God, the dogs. Who could have said there were that many of them and each as different from one another as different can be. Puppies and pooches and fidos and hounds and pure breeds and half breeds and mongrels and mutts and rascals and tail waggers and lap dogs and bird dogs and watch dogs and show dogs and bandits and scamps and you know, each and every one of them, our best friends. The more I drove and the more people I saw, the more amazed I was and more than amazed, consoled. Because everywhere I went and everyone I saw, do you know who I didn't see? Not even once, not at all. I did not see a single person for whom Christ did not die. Never, not anywhere, not even one, and therefore, what I also did not see was a single person for whom Christ did not rise, not will rise, not Easter someday, but rose already. And so Easter now, today, you just have to stare carefully to see it. Because as I watched them all, I got to wondering just where these people might be this Easter day, which of course then was in the future. And more, where would they be the following weekend? Or the weekend after that? Or the next? Weekends all in Easter time, technically, no matter how much like Good Friday they may feel when they actually arrive. Here's where they'll all be, I thought to myself, I hoped. Be not today necessarily, or tomorrow, or next week perhaps. But here's where they'll all be soon enough, I like to think, whenever that day may be. Back. <laughs> That's where they'll be. They'll be back. Well, not all of them perhaps. I suspect that not all of them will be back. Some of the people up on those porches, for example, or some of those joggers or dog walkers or cyclists or stroller pushers or the ones lined up for coffee or the ones starting happy hour early. Some of them, sadly, will probably not be back. And maybe even those who are back will not be all back 
because some of them will have lost someone and that person's place in their heart will be empty, leaving them less than they were when I saw them. And even for those who lost no one, the vast sum of all the world's loss will weigh on them, no doubt, cost them something, make them less than they were before, even if only a little. But even that doesn't account for the less than that many may feel in the future, no matter the relief from having the sheltering in place over and the working from home behind them. This is what struck me as I saw people out and about, that if there's so very much that's unexpected about these days, some of that unexpected stuff, it's going to be hard to leave behind when life returns to whatever normal will one day be. I've heard this from family and friends again and again these days, and maybe you've heard it too, that there's something special about right now, a kind of revelation about who we are and what we hope things might be like for us, discoveries about life and about one another, about what you now know means the world to you, about time, and how you would hope best to spend it. We knew these things all along, you and I, but we knew them casually, knew them in a take-it-for-granted kind of way. But now, don't we know these things in our bones? Know them in our very bones? Do you think, like I think, like I've heard that a number of people think, that it'd be a shame to lose all of that when at last we leave the virus behind? And so, where might we find Easter today, the virus notwithstanding? Here is where I think, here, exactly where we are, exactly with the people around us, however they are around us exactly when we are doing whatever it is that we are doing, and especially when we are doing it with them. Try this the next time you find yourself thinking, this is really nice right now, or I'm so glad for this moment, or I wish it could be like this more often, or I hope I remember this in the future, or maybe even simply this person. These people, how I love them. My God, how I love them. That moment when it comes is a gift, isn't it? A grace, a blessing. And because a grace, because a blessing, it didn't come ultimately from you now, did it? It came for you, yes, most certainly. It did not come from you. It came from somewhere else, from as deeply beyond you as deeply within you. And because it did, because it came ultimately from him whom we celebrate in a special way today, it brings a kind of light within it, more than what normally meets our merely mortal eyes, a shine a gleam. Try this. Squint hard at those moments of your life when they come in these days and hold your eyes as loving and as unblinking as you can, the better to receive the gift. And know that what you see in those instants, it's an echo of the same light that long ago in its full and primordial force knocked back the stone from the tomb, stripped burial cloths away, and dissolved the bonds of death forever. At that moment, and all the moments like it, the one who, it's true, appeared to Simon long ago, has appeared again, and now to you. Who knew that this could be the truth, friends, the plain and unvarnished and absolute truth, that as you made your homemade Easter, even if you only warmed a cup of soup, 
Easter made its home in you. God's best blessings to you all.